Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and now I will start a video series about the book The Money Game and Beyond. So I was thinking before I make more videos about other trade free goods and services to make videos about our book The Money Game and Beyond because it is such an extremely important book and it basically explains the history of trade, how it originated into this worldwide craziness that we can see nowadays and it explains how people have all those distorted values um, coming from the environment, coming from that trade environment and also then about solutions. So to me that is, uh, it is such an amazing book and I want to talk about it. Because you know we need to be smart about our problems, you know. I was just um, watching a documentary from like in the German television and it was about nature and about the problems and about humans that humans are creating like destroying their planet basically but you know they were not talking about the elephant in the room they were not talking about trade and the environment that pushes people to create those problems and then they were showcasing some people who were saving some koalas from the bushfires in australia and then also um, other people were saving some turtles and then other people were saving monkeys and planting trees in Africa. You know, they want to plant a so-called green belt. I think they want to plant one billion trees in Africa to, yeah, I don't know, protect the, the rainforest from more desertification, I think. So yeah, and these approaches are great. I mean, if you plant some trees, I also planted some trees by myself doing volunteering work. But I learned eventually, because of the Tron project, that this is basically only tackling symptoms of our society. And if we want to change the society, if we want to be smart about our society, we need to understand how it works. And um, so yeah, that's why I make this video now about the money game and beyond. And you know, I was also thinking how to approach this, because I'm actually not that good at explaining, you know. I'm I'm just I'm super calm and you know I'm more listening I basically listened all my life to different people different organizations different ideas and that's why I basically ended up at the Tron project because I think like that's the most important relevant and scientific project I came across to change the world so yeah, I don't know how to make videos now about um, the book The Money Game and Beyond. I can just show it to you. Um, it's this one. But yeah, I said to myself, Aaron, just fucking do it and you will maybe get better in time. And basically, if people don't like my videos, just don't give a shit. They can make videos themselves, better ones. And I'm sure like you can also make videos about that book even 10 times better than me. So just fucking go for it. and. You know, that's what I'm just doing. I'm just um, talking about the problems and showcasing solutions. That's, I think, the most important that we need in those days. So, yeah, and I don't know exactly how to approach this because the money game and beyond is different than the origin of most problems. You know, in the origin of most problems book, I could just like talk the dialogues from the Trump superhero and the other people in that book. But this book is more about explaining. So. And what is also a point which I'm struggling so much is because of the compressed information in basically every sentence. So you will see that this book, I mean, you, you just fucking read it, like just look into it, read it yourself. That's basically why I make those videos and I just want to like, yeah, showcase that this is super, super interesting, super, super important. And um, yeah, I, I cannot put it in better words than it is in the book. That's why I'm struggling so much, <laughs> but I'm just trying and explaining what the book is about. So there are three chapters. There is moving stuff and people around. That is the part about the history of trade, how it originated and how it developed into this craziness. Then the second chapter is about systems to organize societies, you know, 
Throughout history there have been many different people with different ideas like communism, socialism, capitalism, colonialism, totalitarianism, anarchism, technocracy, open source, the sharing and gift economies and in that part we will look into them and see okay what are they proposing and we will yeah check them out and see how did they work like in history if we look into history what worked what didn't work and what could eventually improve our societies worldwide enormous that's what the third point is about um, because we will realize that basically the structure of our society is straight that's what it boils down to so we need to um, go beyond that game that we play on a daily basis and in that part we will also um, take into account the um, approach in the medical field about aging because many scientists are agreeing that um, aging is the origin of most health problems and they are tackling aging instead of its symptoms instead of a disease like Alzheimer for example and this is a very interesting approach and that's also something we compare the Trump project with so yeah, the first part is about moving stuff and people around. So now I'm just thinking, should I read every sentence that is written in here? Of course, that does make sense. So I will just pinpoint and explain in my words what this is about. And yeah, maybe that's a good way to approach this book. And by the way, you can also get involved yourself. Like if you have the motivation and time, you can of course make videos about that book as well or you can also record an audiobook about that book that would be super cool so yeah this one is about um, how money rules our daily lives basically because of course like what am i going to do without any money of course you know i tried hitchhiking and that also works i can also um, of course ask people for food and try to live without money but basically if you look around the world basically everybody is using money and it is ruling our lives it makes people happy it makes people sad it makes people depressed and everything is connected with money how we um, like distribute resources like if you have a lot of money you can basically get a lot of things and if you are super poor you cannot afford many things so let's really talk about money because many people are not talking about money they just take it as it is a normal thing but let's really question it like what is money and <laughs> why do we have even money is it really necessary so yeah this is something we are going to discuss because we have many dilemmas in our world like that's what this is about like for instance why is there such a huge difference in price between these two cars like you see this one is about 450,000 US dollars this Lamborghini and just a normal car a cheap one is about $10,000 so how is it that there is such a huge difference between those cars and then another dilemma is is a banana more expensive in one tribe than another one even when it comes from the same plantation and then when one lives in one tribe and in another tribe how is it that for example in spain the internet is five times slower and five times more expensive than in romania why is stuff more expensive in one tribe than another one and then a the huge one is this one like <laughs> how is it that this painting is valued as much as 1000 of these huge villas like honestly why in the world is it like that because it's a fucking painting in the end it's just something that you put on a wall and that's it and then it is worth as much as 1000 villas like 1000 homes that people can live in what the fuck is happening so I mean these are super important questions and we need to talk about them and think about them like why is it like that also can monetary reward properly justify people's work and also who makes all these prices and what do they reflect so if you are as confused as I am about this worldwide money game then you should take this journey with me as I am going to try to find all these things out so yeah to understand all of this we need to look at how money was invented and we will discover that it comes from trade basically 
But before we embark on this journey, um, we want to understand that basically life or our world and time is about frame and pixels. So if you watch that video, you will see that the borders of different tribes of different countries have been different like 1000 years ago. Like, you know, there was also a time when there was a huge Roman Empire and then there was a time when there were other empires and so these things are changing all the time and basically they are human inventions and that's what this is about also this one is about um, like if you ask me how is it in Germany then I can only say how it is um, based on my experience growing up here like you know I'm right now in my room like where I grew up and in a small village with like 700 people and of course this is different than when I would grow up in like a big city in Germany of course that's a whole different story so we also need to understand that if we want to um, yeah think about how it was in the Roman Empire then we think about all the like we think about Caesar or about um, Cicero and all those philosophers and um, emperors like the conquerors but then you also need to understand that the Roman Empire was about yeah a lot of slaves and people were struggling in their daily lives so yeah this is more about the pixel in the frame history looks so simple tribes with borders tribes with new borders leaders and regimes but it's not at all like that when you see a tribe outlined on a map that tribe is not a thing it's a bunch of things people with slightly different values regional laws and different law enforcements also here in the roman empire like which existed 2000 years ago 30 to 40 percent of the population were slaves so yeah it's also important to understand all that and not just have this um, yeah shallow understanding of like life and of our world because there are so many things and we also have to understand that it's complex like human societies are super super complex so we also need to consider that and take it into account but then of course we also um, can see different patterns different um, things which basically like shape our world and our societies we can basically group them into resources and services and values so religions rituals beliefs and so on and we have a book about morality and ethics maybe i'm also going to make a video about that one but um, yeah in this book we are going to look at resources and services and basically we can yeah i think we can all agree that trade is what shapes our world which rules our world basically shaping borders time zones roads as well as people's values the concept of trade then leads us to the monetary system so understanding how it got here will provide us with an educated view about the world today and a more stable projection of what the future can become and what I also just wanted to mention is that you can click on those links. Basically, these are sources for some of those claims or references and you can read more about them. Inventing currency. So to say that the act of trade began at one point of time is very unrealistic as people have likely exchanged goods and services for millennia. You have sheep and I can take care of them. Then you can give me some sheep meat or four for my service. You have cows and I make clothes, so I get some milk and you get some shoes. You get the point. But here it's also about the notion of property that that like greatly varied between different um, communities, different clusters of people. Here is the example of nomads who travel all the time, never settling in one place. They view earth as belonging to no one. It's just there and they take advantage of it to feed, clothe and protect themselves. And I personally was also reading some books about hunter and gatherer communities and they were more about sharing and gifting and you know that trade thing was more unrecognizable like if one came back from hunting he was just sharing it with everybody else and then of course others were contributing to the society like by taking care of children or doing some other tasks but yeah, it was more about sharing and gifting and not this is my thing now and this is your thing. 
it was more like sharing because of course I think it was also important for the community to stay together and to work together because eventually otherwise they yeah probably couldn't survive and here you can also see this time frame saying 12,000 years ago I personally also have to think about the agricultural revolution that happened at that time like when human beings changed from being hunters and gatherers and became farmers basically and they settled down at one place and also could start to hoard stuff and like there was a big shift in human history in, in human societies and um, yeah that was also like 12,000 years ago so in this example we are going to learn that currencies are about valuing things at least in theory because nowadays this notion is completely distorted but let's go back to the example like when I have a cow and you have a pair of shoes like um, I want to have them and you want to have some cow meat how are we going to do that am I going to give you the whole cow for that pair of shoes but then I don't have any value anymore I don't have anything anymore so I'm not going to do that and am I going to cut off a leg from that cow and give it to you for that pair of shoes but then the cow will die and I will lose value so let's just agree on something like for example shells they used shells grain beads and other such things to equate for goods and services and let's say that um, like four cow legs are worth of like eight shells for example and then one pair of shoes is worth one shell and then I'm just gonna give you one shell for that pair of shoes and you can buy cow meat uh, with one shell for like one leg of a cow like in the market that's like what eventually comes up but then a question is to be asked like was the tribes fisherman the one proposing that shells will be used as a currency think about that because he might have had access to many more than anyone else so how in the world did these simple things become currencies like imagine someone coming to you and say here I have 17 shells I want your boat and then I will be like hell no crazy guy I can't do a thing with your shells I can't eat them can't float on them to leave the island I can't make fire with them they are useless but hang on for a minute isn't that the same thing with money today and we'll come back later to this in this series but let's focus on history for now so this is a really interesting point because if you think about it what is money it's just a fucking piece of paper that's what it is and we just agree that it has some value but a piece of paper i cannot do much with a piece of paper i can burn it of course but i mean that it has value is just based on our culture in the society that we live in so learning who proposed the exchange currency may be a bit of a mystery or perhaps it was something emerging from the culture for instance shells were used for other things like jewelry before that so they may have adopted them for exchange because they were familiar with them what we also have to think about is that the value of these shells is just cultural based like in this example you must be a bit nuts to give up your cow for just eight shells right i mean you have a cow and then you just get like eight tiny shells for that i mean you cannot do anything with those shells it's just that we agree that i can buy with those shells something else so this is also something you really need to think about and consider and then another thing is if I go back in time and like sell I want to sell my smartphone for example then probably nobody would give me a shell for that so yeah these are super super interesting and scientific points that you need to consider and I can also just encourage you to check out the book and read it for yourself and ponder about them because they are so interesting if you think about it so a cow may have valued at eight shells and a pair of shoes at only one shell but a smartphone or a piece of gold would be worth nothing to them and if there were more cows in an area and very little shoes and people were into shoes at that time then shoes would have become more valuable due to their scarcity and the fact that people wanted them a person selling them could put a higher price on it because the demand was greater recognizing that people who owned cows could even afford to give two cows for one pair of shoes it's important to note that all of that could be reflected in a currency system that they had just invented 
And then this point is about that you just couldn't go to the beach and get like five shells and then pay with those. No, they made some kind of special shells. It's just like nowadays where we have those special kind of papers like money. You know, it's a very complicated process to make money. And if you fake it, then you might like get into jail, for example, or you could face harsh punishment. So from that moment on, it was just as simple as it is today. People would use these things, the shells, beads, without wondering where they came from or what their real value is. Of course, this entire trading system is what gave birth to the concept of rulers and those who were ruled by the system. Some would strive to control this currency while others would end up controlled by it. So this is explained here. This kind of market system started with a few basic things that people needed and were able to trade, like animals, vegetables, grains. As trade rules developed among tribe members, they were enforced by the tribal leaders and even more by their armies and were eventually introduced to other surrounding tribes, whether by force, conquering and forcing other tribes to adopt this system or by need, other tribes had to adopt to this new kind of market in order to exchange goods and services with them. So yeah, this entire thing emerged like 12,000 years ago, but it took a while for it to become widely adopted. So yeah, this is basically how this trade mess started because then you got the rulers and the ones who own a currency because of course they then came up with different coins like gold coins for example and if you are the one who like owns the gold mine for example if you have a lot of gold and with that gold you make the coins then you have so much power like of course and then just think about the kings back in those days who had like ridiculous amounts of wealth and then the others were just struggling and like super poor and slaving away basically. And then one more thing before I end this video is that tribes like they thrived on places where tectonic plates met and pushed together because then there were some like raw materials that they could also use for trading for example. So that's something you could also um, see throughout human history where like societies emerged and clustered together basically around places with significant resources and other advantages like trade. So yeah, that was it for this video. I'm super tired right now. And then in the next video I will talk about the trust which is about the Silk Road which just made this trading mess if you will even better like people had then more and more distorted values for example they could trade and get like this rare food from india or that rare food from china so yeah let's discover it in the next video i'm just gonna say um, see you then in the next video have a good one take care and much love